Hi everyone, it's Gwen from Hummingbird Tarot, and today I'm doing a video response to Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So today's video prompt is the top five tarot decks that came to your collection in 2020 or were released in 2020. And I picked ones that were added to my collection in 2020. I don't typically buy decks as they're released. Uh, I do have one that was released in 2020, but the rest of them, um, I just slowly add decks to my tarot collection as I feel drawn to purchase them. If I see others use them, I like to add things to my list and sit on them for a while. I'm a tarot collector on a budget, and so I typically tend to buy most of my decks through mass market because they're less expensive and I can get more decks for each dollar that I spend. So I'm just going to go through the, the five decks. I, I did buy more than five decks in 2020, but these are the top five that I enjoyed the most, used the most, really connected with. So the first one I want to choose is the Happy Tarot. And I chose this one. It reminds me a lot, and I've mentioned this if you've seen the other videos of mine, it reminds me a lot of the movie Wreck-It Ralph and the Candyland world that they end up in. And I just find this deck, it, it, it follows your, I'm trying to get, not get a glare here. Uh, so it follows the typical Rider Waite Smith images. And here's what the back of the cards look like. They are reversible. And if you look at this, you can see there's all kinds of candy and everybody's happy in here. You do have all the typical images. She, she looks naked, but she's not. She's wearing little tiny hearts. They're just small. <laughs> um, they're, they're just, it's just so lighthearted and fun and silly, but it does offer really straightforward answers, and I find it very easy to read, and I also find it to be what I would consider a kinder deck. Now, there are people who don't like what you might call froofy decks. Uh, this is definitely one of those decks, but I find that especially if it's someone who's a little intimidated by tarot itself this deck is a one is one that makes tarot more accessible and more comfortable for people who aren't um, aren't comfortable with tarot already or if they need to be told things in a kinder gentler way and uh, for pretty much everyone I know and I'm sure all of you out there 2020 was a very difficult year so I found myself coming back to this deck a lot just because it it was kind of fun. It didn't take itself too seriously, but it still got the message across. And it's it's like hanging out with a friend that is a lot of fun to be with, but they still tell you, they tell it to you like it is. And there's no question that, you know, they're on your side and they're rooting for you, but they're going to they're gonna tell it to you straight. And they're going to tell you the answers to the questions that you have. And that's one thing I really appreciate about this deck. Let's just see if I, I don't know if I covered this box at all. Uh, as with all my tarot videos, you can find links to these tarot decks in my description, and that'll take you directly to those. Now, another deck that I got was the Universal Weight. This is the Pocket Edition, and I have the Universal Weight. I do a lot of uh, RWS Versus videos where I compare a standard Rider Waite Smith tarot deck to a you know any other tarot deck that's out there that's based on Rider Waite Smith, just so we can take a look at where they're similar, where they're different, and how the cards compare to each other. And the deck that I typically use is the Universal Weight tarot deck, and it's these images that are in this smaller deck of cards. However, this version is such a cleaner copy, a cleaner version of that. And I do have a video to that uh, that that's going to be coming out where I did a comparison of the two decks. But I, I love everything about this deck. So here's what the back looks like. And it is reversible, as you can see. It is your trip, typical Rider Waite Smith images. But the watercolor versions in here, uh, it, it's just much cleaner. And the colors aren't as glaring some of the yellows in that other deck are a little glaring. This is just a softer, but you'll find the detail in each of these is much more crisp and clean. And I find this 
much more comfortable and I like everything about it everything about this deck and the size especially I have smaller hands so if you're one of those that has smaller hands this is a good deck for you even if you don't it's a good size to stick in your bag and take with you it doesn't take up a whole lot of space the box itself it doesn't stay closed very easily so if it gets knocked around uh, if you kept it in a side pocket or something it, it'd be better off but um, the lid does come off if you if you just throw it in a bag however it, it is nice if you have it in a, a protected tighter pocket it will protect the cards from getting beat up and I find myself coming back to this deck a lot mostly I just shuffle it for comfort I do a lot of readings with this deck and this has become my favorite Rider Waite Smith tarot deck in my collection Now a deck that I got that came out this year is the Everyday Witch, the mini version, and this is a very small deck of cards. I do have a review of this deck and I will link that as well. If you click on the little eye on your screen, you can um, go to the, the videos that I've linked there. But I did color the outside edges of this tarot deck. You can see some of them are starting to fade a little bit just to match the blue here as I did with my larger version of this. The Everyday Witch Tarot deck is one of my favorite tarot decks. Again, uh, I appreciate this deck for the same reasons that I, I appreciated the Happy Tarot. It doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's a more approachable deck, and it's a good bridge for people that aren't quite comfortable with traditional tarot cards or some of the quote scarier more direct tarot cards and I appreciate that about it. I do find this deck especially in the beginning I found this deck a little too small to shuffle easily and and work with easily in all of my readings but one thing again that I did with this tarot deck that I found that I did with the Universal Weight Pocket Edition is that this is a deck I just handle a lot. I find myself playing with it, I'll shuffle it, almost like a security blanket that I find playing with it, um, a comfort. And then it also, if, if you do take pictures of, of your readings and use them online, it does make it a little bit easier to fit everything in a smaller, um, screen so this is this is good for that and for those of you who like small tarot decks this is a, a mini version it's definitely smaller let me just show you the size real fast and then as you can see that back it's exactly like the big version the images are exactly like the larger version of this tarot deck uh, I have done a walkthrough of the larger version that you can look for I have done a, a Rider Waite Smith RWS versus um, video on this but if you're familiar with the images you'll see that it does match the large version exactly other than size and then this happy tarot deck this is the size of a traditional tarot deck and here is the smaller version of the RWS versus and then I should mention that pocket edition that I was talking about earlier it does remind me of a um, as far as the height goes of a, a traditional poker deck of cards and then the width is a little thinner and I'll compare this one as well I'll show you that to a traditional tarot deck you can see it's a lot shorter and a little bit more narrow but not much more narrow than a traditional tarot deck okay so the next one I wanted to talk about is that came to my collection this year is the Sasa Rabito tarot deck and this one's beautiful I love this deck you can see how shiny the edges are I bought this deck used online and you may or may not have seen this deck before I just don't really connect with the images in here I love the artistic style of the deck and it's much more diverse than a lot of other tarot decks might be and what I did I should mention I, I add clothes so I added a bathing suit to her there is some nudity in this deck and I like to um, I don't mind nudity when I'm doing readings for myself or close friends 
but anytime I do anything online, I have a younger audience. I mention this often, I know. Um, so those of you who've watched my videos before, thanks for your patience while I explain this again. But um, I I don't like to show nudity on my channel on my channel because I do have a younger audience. And then also when I and when I'm doing readings, I find that nudity is a little jarring in readings. So and I love I love the way this deck feels. The cardstock is is it's it's a little bit thicker than what a, a standard tarot stock might be a little thicker but it but it's thin enough to where if you want to do a ripple shuffle that that shuffles fairly easy i do ripple shuffles shuffles fairly often and the gilding is holding up to that and i i just like this deck a lot it came with a really nice hard box too. It is a little hard to get in and out of this to separate these two boxes so I don't really keep it in this box. I have it sitting on my tarot shelf because I use it often. So finally the last deck that came into my tarot collection in 2020 is the Everyday Enchantment Tarot by Poppy Palin. Palin I think is how you say her last name and this one it comes with a really good book so if you're new to tarot or if you want to just take a book and and read it i read through it i enjoyed it there wasn't anything earth shattering new that i learned i have been reading for a really long time but it, it's good for beginners it does you know there's a few few new pieces of information different interpretations as there are with every book that accompanies a tarot deck so um, i always like to take a look and see sometimes the author offers a different perspective but the thing that I like the best about this deck is that it has modern situations in it. So let me just take you through some of these. The back of the deck is gorgeous. It's lots of energy, very fun. Uh, I guess one complaint I would have about it is just the deck is just so big. And I could trim it, but I, I just feel like it would damage the image on the front. So it's a little cumbersome to shuffle. The cardstock is fairly thick, but I do appreciate the images here and you'll notice like a, a matte rose petal finish on here. I'll just flip through some of these images so you can see. The images in here are situations, at least some of them, hopefully, I was going to say that you would see in everyday life. Hopefully this isn't a situation that you would see in everyday life, but, but the people that you see in here are people that you might see in the, the street every day. Uh, if you live in a city and this is what my community looks like so I appreciate that a variety of ages variety of races oh I showed that one already so but as you can see it, it makes this deck easier to read and I have figured out how to shuffle it because I like it so much and I, I keep coming back to it but I do wish it was a little bit easier for me to shuffle uh, it does have a really nice sturdy box too that it came in with a magnetic close and I just I really like the energy of this deck so I hope you enjoyed the five decks that came into my collection in 2020 and I can't wait to see what everyone else shares thanks for watching